what's going on guys what's good what's good we're here for another exciting course on indie publishing all right so by a show of likes all right hit that like button by a show of likes uh how many of y'all did your homework all right if you did your homework hit the like button now <laughs> I know, right? It's kind of crazy to even think that way, but uh, we did a lot of homework yesterday. I mean, this this weekend on Discord, you guys were blowing it up. All right, I remember on Discord, I was seeing like freaking thirty people saying stuff. It was so crazy. <laughs> it was so crazy, man. Y'all were just talking and talking, and you know, I have to measure myself, right? Because I Sometimes I do get on there and like talk to you guys and j um, check your work, right? But there's so many of you with so many ideas that I have to make sure to hold myself back. But in the Discord channel, y'all had to have dropped at least like 500 comments since Monday because y'all really, y'all really uh, collaborate and trying to put your ideas out there. So I thought that was a that was a pretty proud moment watching you guys, uh, you know, collaborate and get in there and work diligently trying to improve yourself so uh i think we're gonna have great success in this course personally <laughs> So first things first i'm gonna give everybody a chance to get in here so i want to hear uh what you guys thought about the homework okay so please give me your feedback on what you thought about the homework what was done so far and um what you're looking forward to um coming up yes maris you can actually go and watch it again it's over there on the the live feed so if you go to our um our page and just look at the past videos you'll find it right away Yeah, well, yeah. When you read like Save the Cat, the first chapter, you start realizing that that uh, basically your story, like if you can't explain your story, you know, you kind of you kind of have to rework a couple of things, right? You might even have to overhaul your entire story because you can't explain it, right? It's like, it's like nobody can understand what your story is. Even you can't you can't explain it in a in one to two sentences, you know? So. What the first chapter of um, Save the Cat does is it uh, basically tries to teach you how to, you know, basically speak speak about your story in a way that people can understand. Even average Joe on the street will be able to understand clearly what your story is. And if they ask for more, then you go into your um, long um, explanation summary of your story. All right. Hey, Gut, stop saying Mistress Giselle, all right? <laughs> She's not Mistress. She's my wife. All right, it's a little touchy thing. I just don't like that word, all right? All right, now just to just let you guys know, the homework is in the um, the homework is in the um, the the basically the 
I forgot the word for it. The caption underneath the video. There should be a homework assignment right there at the very top. It should say homework and then it should give you the Google Drive thing. That's your homework for Friday, okay? Right now, we're going to start going right into our next class. So let's start it up right now. The keys to writing, the log line, all right? This is week one, class two, all right? All right, so we start off with the simple question, what is a log line, all right? Now, this is not the explanation that they give in Save the Cat, but it is an explanation that I give personally because I come up with a lot of ideas and I help a lot of people, and these are the kind of things I expect when I see a log line, all right? So first things first, uh, a one to two sentence description of your entire story, all right? A clear main character, and his or her journey. A clear sense of irony in the main character's journey. And a vision of the enti of entire story and the possibilities. All right, now, um, first of all, you need to be able to explain your story in one to two sentences, okay? This is just, this is just something you're gonna need no matter what, whether you're selling it, whether you're describing it, whether you're pitching it to a to a studio or, or a publisher or something like that, you're going to need to explain your story in two sentences. You also, and when you're explaining your story, it has to be from the perspective of a main character, all right? You can't have like seven different people in your, in your um, opening pitch, or it can't be about the world, right? You can't explain the world in your pitch because... Basically, the story has to be told from somebody's perspective. So by not having a main character, you're, the person who's listening to you has no clue where to, um, what they should be anticipating, you know? Uh, a clear sense of irony. When I say irony, basically what I mean is um, opposites, all right? So let's say a brave warrior, right? A brave warrior who's never known defeat must... Um, negotiate the surrender of you know a 10,000 man army in order to save his empire that's something that's ridiculous for somebody who's never known defeat right that's the exact opposite of what you expect from a brave warrior who's never known defeat to be able to negotiate a surrender right then you, you know uh you have stuff like uh uh, a irresponsible stripper becomes a daycare manager, right? Is forced to become a daycare manager because his mom, her mom, got injured. You know, these are scenarios in which, <laughs> these are scenarios in which basically the dynamic of the main character has completely flipped on its head, and you can imagine hours and hours of content from that, um, from basically that idea. You know what I'm saying? So that's the that's irony, right? It's always an opposite effect. Like you can't just have something where the guy who's really good at kicking butt kicks butt. You know, that's like you know, <laughs> there's not much to go there. You're not gonna have that much um, understanding. And then um, a vision of an entire story and the possibilities. This is more to understand the scope of your story, right? So if you say seven different kingdoms are vying for power and there are dragons who come from the sky devouring entire cities, one man. So when you say stuff like that, you're basically telling people you're going to have the biggest budget in the universe. You're going to have like a 300 page book because you have so many different viewpoints to put in your story. But if you say something like, hey, uh, a family goes on a family vacation and ends up all, all you know, getting into some deep trouble or whatever, right? You're setting up a scenario in which it's basically a family vacation, right? So it's a couple of a couple of scene changes, a couple of things. You're not going to have a really 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 big story over this, right? It's more in budget, all right? So we're talking about what we expect from the overall um um project just from the first two sentences, all right? <laughs> so let's move into them, right? Here's a couple of log lines I've seen in movies that um, basically I, I, I love these log lines, right? I love them. And we'll go into each one uh, one at a time. Let's start off with Bruce Willis's Die Hard. All right. So Bruce Willis goes like this. 
A cop comes to L.A. to visit his estranged wife, and her office building is taken over by terrorists. All right, so this one goes straight to the point. It's not really giving you too much. Uh, uh, it is not really giving you too much uh, details on the emotional states of the characters, except for he says his estranged wife, which basically means they're not necessarily really a good couple, right? So he's just he's just meeting, he's trying to meet up with his wife, but they're not necessarily a strong couple. And their office building gets taken over by terrorists. This is telling you exactly what's about to happen in this entire film. One guy versus an entire office building full of terrorists. All right? It's a scenario. That's why the movie has a name called Die Hard instead of a movie called Bruce Willis. Or, or uh, I mean, uh, uh, freaking, what was his dude, what dude's name? Uh, well, whatever. I don't. I don't care about his name right now. But basically, the movie is telling you what the movie is, right? Die hard, right? <laughs> you know, we're not gonna die. This is a hard way we're going out, and we're gonna take these terrorists. All right, that's cool. That's a cool pitch. If you know, if you think it's one cop in a building versus a whole army of terrorists, you're gonna be like, okay, this might be real dope, right? And then you got um. The next one, right? <laughs> the next one is uh, Ride Along, right? Ride Along. This one's this one's a masterpiece, okay? Ride Along. The Ride Along log line is freaking amazing, and I'll break it down for you after I read it, okay? Yeah, John McCain. Imagine the movie was called John McCain, right? You wouldn't understand what what's going on, right? It's, <laughs> however, if you did the movie with uh, what was it uh? Now, I'll leave it alone for now, but there's other movies that had the exact same scenario, and it was dope. Uh, let's see. Right along. A risk-adverse teacher, right, plans on marrying his dream girl, but must first accompany his overprotective future brother-in-law, a cop, on a ride along from hell. All right, so this is perfect. First of all, we have a clear identity of who the main character is. A risk-adverse teacher teacher all right so this is a teacher first of all teachers you already know the teachers are usually softies right they're not exactly the toughest people in the world but they made sure that you understood that this teacher is extremely soft so they said he's a risk adverse as in like any kind of risk he ain't dealing with he's scared right uh but he's gonna marry his dream girl which means that the stakes are high right i have to marry this woman so i'm gonna do anything i can to marry my dream girl Right. So he accompanies his overprotective future brother-in-law. Now, overprotective is is one thing. Right. You can have like a bully brother-in-law. That's not that bad. Right. It's still bad, but it's not that bad. But then they say a cop. And now <laughs> once they put a cop on there, now, you know, it's about to get dangerous. Not just, oh, I want to see if he's tough enough. He can get shot. <laughs> right. On a ride along from hell. All right, so this is the this is the ultimate scenario. This is the ultimate scenario for a crazy like 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 story about one character who basically has to flip his entire personality on his head just to survive the night so he can marry his dream girl, man. You know, he can't back out of this. He don't he don't want to do it. He can't but he can't back out of it because that's his dream girl. This is the perfect way of setting stakes, right? The promise. You know you know how in Save the Cat they talk about the promise? What is the promise of the film? The promise of the film is the main character is going to come into a scenario over and over and over again where he's going to have to check his own freaking dignity and courage in order to just get by and make himself just good enough in order to get his girl okay this is the promise every scenario should be checking his risk adverse attitude right it should be a check is he going to freaking fold or is he going to come come apart and most of the movie he should fold right most of the story if it was a book he should fold because that's how you could tell that it's a really hardcore problem that he's dealing with okay he said, then, um, finally, you know, uh, pretty woman, right? Pretty woman, another one, right? A business man, he said, a businessman falls in love with a hooker. He hires 
to be his date for the weekend. All right, this is the this is a scenario that's kind of crazy because basically a businessman means that this guy's a professional, right? He he he's worked his life for he's worked his life for a long time in order to establish himself. That's what you can assume when they use the word businessman. But then he falls in love with a hooker, somebody who hasn't necessarily like like worked uh, um, by following the rules, by working up the chain of command in order to get the position in which they are in today. It's the exact opposite of what he is, right? Yet he still falls in love. And because we are listening to this pitch, we can't help but think, oh, a whole bunch of drama is about to come from this. We don't even know. We don't even know what the heck the movie is going to be about, what the scenes are, the locations. We don't need to know. All we need to know that this is a scenario that normally will get people in trouble, right? And we're just sitting back waiting for the trouble to begin. You know, like this has to be funny. This has to be crazy. <laughs> All right, now I am going to look over the comments because I see a lot of people were commenting about these log lines. So I'm going to go over and I'm going to shout out to people who are um, giving out their giving their opinions. All right, so let's see here. All right, so Specs Vision says, future brother-in-law that doesn't like him. Uh, you don't have to say uh, doesn't like him. Instead, give your future brother-in-law uh, basically um, an adjective that makes him automatically not like anyone, regardless of it's him. So you see in this um, ride-along, in this ride-along uh, pitch, they use the word overprotective. Overprotective means it doesn't matter who it is. They're not going to get past, you know, his his walls. You understand what I'm saying? So you see how he, how they use that? They could have said uh, the brother who doesn't like him, right? But that's too, like, personal. It has to be something that's so insurmountable. Like, he doesn't like anyone he doesn't care who it is all right so um that's how they use that one let's see what else we got here so yes um later on in the course in this particular class we're going to be go um, allowing you guys to post your log lines here your best one. And remember, you should pick your best log line from this course's information, okay? So we're basically showing you great log lines. We're showing you the elements of great log lines. And whichever one you think is closest to that, right, that's the one you should share in the comments at the end of the class so I can pull it up and uh, cr critique it, okay? That's what we're going to be doing near the end. All right, let's move forward, all right? The next part is titles are a part of the pitch, all right? A title of your book or series should give a clue as to what it is about, all right? So, there's three categories. Manuel Godoy has three categories, all right? This is not in Save the Cat. This is entirely my personal uh, categories for titles, all right? That is a noun, a.k.a. The main character, a location, or a historical moment. All right, so I'll give you a couple of good examples of that. Uh, let's say, let's say Stalingrad. Right? If you see a movie uh, or a story or a book or a comic book and it said Stalingrad, that was the name of it. You already know most likely this is about a battle in World War II. You just you just automatically know that. You're like, okay, I already know what's going to happen in this entire movie. It's going to be a battle in World War II. You know, it helps. It helps the pitch. He don't have to go hardcore into Stalingrad's information once he calls the book Stalingrad. You don't have to say, in Stalingrad, in World War II, this particular thing happened. He don't have to do any of that because the pitch was accompanied with the name Stalingrad. You don't need to know anything else about Stalingrad. You know what Stalingrad is about. All right? All 
Okay, I will deal with that in a second, all right? So let's go to our uh, next one, right? And I'm just going to hide myself for a second. That way you guys can see it. So let me go to the editor. Let me go and block my webcam. Nope, that's not it. How about this? Nope. All right, I fixed it for you guys. All right. So, as I was saying, uh, basically what you're going to be getting is uh. He said, that's what it is for downs, all right? So you can name a movie uh, or a book or a comic, right? You can name it Lucius, right? Lucius. If the main character, if it's all about him and there's really nothing else to the story besides the actions of the main character, then you, sh you should definitely think of using those kind of names in order to uh, name your story, all right? Then we have act and action, right? An action, something that describes the entire story, i.e., Ride Along, Die Hard, Lost in Space, right? <laughs> uh, what was another one? Um, there was some funny ones that I heard back in the day. Something like uh, uh, Never Miss, right? And it's like a movie about <laughs> uh, uh, basically a, a, a comedy about a sniper, right? Who never misses, right? So it's like Never Miss. You know, <laughs> and, you know, some of these names, the action ones should basically accompany stories that have a lot going on. But the theme stays the same throughout the entire story. All right. You're lost in space. Everything should involve being lost in space. All right. If you've seen if you haven't seen it and you you have Netflix, make sure to watch Lost in Space. It's a great story, has amazing storyline and character development. Right. So you definitely want to check that one out as well. Uh, lastly, we have a symbolic statement, all right? Something that has significance but is not revealed without knowing more about the story. Uh, so we're talking about like legally blonde, uh, black sands, bird box, right? These are these are basically uh, they're important things, but you don't know it's important until you've gotten further into the story. Then you're like, oh, it makes perfect sense why it's black sands. No, it makes perfect sense why it's Bird Box. That's literally the main thing that everybody survives because of. Because of a Bird Box, right? Legally Blonde. What the hell is that movie? I don't know what that is. And then you find out that it's about a freaking blonde who gets picked off of being blonde, but eventually becomes a lawyer and dominates, you know? So it's completely, like, odd that she became that, but... The story, the legally blonde name now has significance and probably makes you remember it more, right? So people tend to remember names that have these subtle, they have symbolic statements in them. They remember these names more than any other names because the way it's revealed to them, the significance of it is so impactful that they can't like, they can't get it out of their heads once they um, remember, like figure out what it was that made it that way. You know, so I always like using those symbolic whenever I'm trying to tell something. I want to make sure that they like really enjoy it for a long time. So uh, that's my choice whenever I'm making names for shows or movies or worlds or whatever. <laughs> All right, so let's move forward. Live workshop, okay? So this is not going to be a super long class, but uh, we are going to be doing live workshop here. All right, so first things first, anybody who wants to volunteer to put their best log line, according to what we've talked about so far, their best log line in the comment section, let me know and I'll look at it. I will assess it myself 
and then I'll give some pointers on how it might be able to be improved. All right, so go right ahead, start dropping those, um, start dropping those, those log lines, and I'll be reviewing them as they come up. Uh, some I will skip, some I will pick, depending on how strong it is. All right, so let's just see what you got. <laughs> Oh, you gotta paste them. You gotta paste your uh, your log line in there in order for me to see it. All right. So specs vision is the first one coming up. Uh, remember, only one log line. Don't give multiple log lines. All right. The best one that you have. Oh, look at it. Mama Nora's here. Uh, let's see. So I'm going with specs vision first. It says some people are destined to be hero, some people are made into heroes, and some people dream of being heroes. But then it's some people like Chaz who just wants to pass high school. All right, so this is a cool scenario, right? This is a cool scenario because, one, it talks about heroes so much. But then it says the main character doesn't want to be a hero. He just wants to graduate high school. Obviously, because we talked about heroes so much, the main character has to become a hero. But, right, and this is a big but, he's not concerned with that. So we have extreme irony in there. And this time the irony was given before we actually got to the introduction of the main character. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. It's actually a very interesting way of doing it. We still don't necessarily know what the story's about right but at least we're interested right so it's not telling us like the actual scenario like the world is full of magical people or something it doesn't tell us any of that but at least it got us our attention and now we're going to ask the question oh wow this is awesome so what what what's forcing him to become a hero and this is where he would go into his summary all right i wouldn't change much on that pitch at all i think it's very strong let's move down further all right Next one is, oh, there's a bunch that just came up. All right, let me go ahead and make sure I know where I'm at. All right, creative, Creatively ODD says, a town with a plethora of problems and a wacky high school girl with tons of time to spare. Watch as Raza and her trusty sidekicks, Kit and Ellie, embark on the oddest jobs you could possibly think of all right so this is very open-ended this is a very open-ended um this is a very open-ended pitch i would say it's more of a concept all right so in this particular pitch right uh first of all it's too many names we should only focus on the main character right so raza and her trusty sidekicks kill it right there no kit and ellie right Embark on the oddest jobs you could possibly think of. Instead, you give give one job and then say, he said, and stuff just like, just as crazy as that, right? So give one scenario that's totally ridiculous and then, and stuff just like that, you know? And then you have a much more interesting story to go by because right now it's very vague, all right? So think about that scenario, right? Also, um, the whole a town with a plethora of problems and a wacky high school girl with tons of time to spare. Uh, I believe that whole first sentence, right, could probably be removed, right? It doesn't really add anything to the pitch. Instead, you say Raza and the trusty sidekicks do crazy missions in town like blah, 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 and other ridiculous things, right? And then it becomes more engaging, right? It's all about Raza. It's not about the town. It's about Raza. So we're going to make her the star. All right, let's see what else. Uh, we're going to Josh Conley Jr. All right, so let's hear his. A drug kingpin looking for love and a regular life fights through betrayal, heartbreak, and prison to obtain his dream. All right, so uh, first of all, uh, we don't I would give some kind of defining characteristic to Josh Conley I mean to the drug kingpin all right we don't have to say who it is this you you described them fine a drug kingpin but we got to have a defining character for them so let's say like a a drug kingpin who's 
whose vengeful spirit got whose vengeful spirit got him in prison now now is looking for a way to redeem himself right you got give a scenario in which they have a defining characteristic and that characteristic is going to be in opposition of what he wants to be right throughout this entire um, story of betrayal heartbreak and prison right so so this is a scenario that you definitely want to um give the drug kingpin some clear some clear thing that they have to focus on in order to become the person they want to be all right right now all we know is that a drug kingpin goes through stuff that drunk pink kingpins go through you know this is exactly what normal drug kingpins go through betrayal heartbreak and prison every drug kingpin goes through that so we got to make sure there is some scenario where the drug kingpin you know has a clearly defined uh goal and a clearly defined like state of being so that we can change them over the story all right let's go with avaris avaris says pendulum shift in a city of violence and a bomb strapped to his wrist a private detective finds himself racing to solve crimes that lead to darker All right, you guys can hear me now? I believe you can. Let me go ahead and turn it down a bit. All right, I'm back. All right, so uh, let's keep going through. Sorry if I missed anything. Uh, I'm going to do a couple more, so let's see. Uh, a random selection. All right, Reclaiming My Soul by Clever B. Ach. Not exactly uh, kosher, but that's your name. So let's go go with it, all right? Reclaiming my soul. From the darkest hell, a broken wife. They said, from the darkest hell, a broken wife and mother escapes abuse and finds herself reclaiming her soul so she can love again. It's not bad. It's not a bad uh, uh, pitch. I actually think that's pretty good. That log line is... It's pretty strong, you know. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out if it's a real soul or if it's like a metaphorical soul, right? So if she's dead, right? If she's dead, uh, definitely let us know in the in the pitch, right? From the darkest hell could easily be just a metaphor, right? Like from the darkest hell, which is like somebody's basement or something, you know. So. We got to make sure that that's like clear. Let's see. Let's go further down. Let's see. Uh, Willie Tutson Jr. In a world where demons, vampires, and creepy crawlies lurk around, uh, there is a secret society that hunts them down to send them back to w from whence they came. All right. That so in that uh, lo log line, I honestly feel it's way too vague. It's a concept. All right, 
So what we have to watch out for when we're doing this is we got to watch out for writing concepts, right? Concepts is like you just write a whole bunch of different concepts for a whole bunch of stories. You could do like 20 in like five minutes. You could just make like massive amounts of concepts, all right? And they're usually it's describing the world. They're describing the world. But when you're doing a log line, you're describing the main character and their path in this world, all right? So that one right there is too general. We don't know anything about any main characters or anything. As far as we're concerned, it's only a secret society, but we don't know if the secret society is even full of humans or not. So uh, we got to make sure that we um, reapproach that log line and start bringing it from the perspective of the main character. Let's go even further. Uh, Duas Nacos. Uh, I assume that's one of my Spanish followers. He said, uh, from the Gentile. Uh, when a mysterious alien warrior's fate crosses path with an ambitious college grad student, an unlikely alliance and friendship form as the truth is unveiled about an ancient, ever-growing war that surpasses all boundaries. Okay. All right, so uh, <clears throat> so if it's an unlikely friendship, right? So let's say an unlikely alliance and friendship, we need to add more juice to this um, log line. So here's one. I'm gonna give you a scenario, right? You don't have to use it. You can use any scenario you want that fits your vision of your story the best. But here's one, right? A xenophobic, a xenophobic alien warrior, and a. Uh, and what, is, what was the two characters? All right, a xenophonic alien warrior and uh, crosses paths with an, you say ambitious college graduate student? Instead say something like with, uh, 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 I guess someone who suffered some kind of tragedy, right? So they really have reasons to hate each other, all right? Make sure that the reasons they hate each other is clear and present in that pitch. All right. That way, when you say form an unlikely alliance and friendship makes complete sense. Right. Because now they, they shouldn't be friends. In fact, we're promised that it's going to be very uncomfortable for them to be friends because you set it up where they already automatically hate the hell out of each other. Right. Due to past experiences. All right. So I will look back at that one and I would definitely uh, assess that from that angle. All right. Let's see what else. All right, let's go with Cameron Phillips. He says, redemption, two celebrity couples just want to enjoy the company of their significant others, yet baffle, yet baffle and jealousy of one another, leading to the, leading to the verge of divorce, is redemption only for a few, for a select few? I, I can't read that one. We, we'll have to make sure that the grammar is, is good enough to, so that we can assess that one. That one, that one I would uh, look at making it a little bit more clearer. By the way, if you can't say your pitch out loud, like if you can't just say it out loud, uh, we have to rewrite it, right? Sometimes we um, put too much details in there or we put too many hard words together and as a result, it's hard to actually say. So always practice saying your pitch out loud in order to make sure that it is a clear and quick pitch that someone can easily decipher. All right, Scorpio says, a no-nonsense no young woman with childhood with childhood filled with abuse recovers fragmented memories during discovering that she was never dealing with struggles alone. All right, so that's a good one. I like that pitch, all right? So the reason why I like that log line is this. We have a clear identity of the character, right? A no-nonsense young woman. So basically, she kind of has no chill. She, she tells it like it is, you know, she got no, she got no, nothing holding her back emotionally. Right, uh, filled with abuse or covers fragmented memories. All right, so she's been through a lot, but she's starting to recover her memory, and then she finds out that someone significant in her past 
was with her, right? Maybe it was a friend. Maybe it was a father figure. I don't know. But now I want to see what this vigilante type woman, this no-nonsense tough girl, is going to do once she finds out who this person is. This leads me into thinking, hey, I have to find out what the synopsis is. I have to find out what this story is about. That's a great log line. Keep it. Let's go with Mama Nora, all right? Life with Numa, a sweet, innocent child who spends most of her time having adventures with her family. No? All right, so I don't believe that's a full pitch. Well, let's see. Let's keep going further. Uh, all right, I'm going to go with just another Mandy. All right, hiding in plain sight is no longer an option when a young woman finds herself caught between two worlds that are threatening to glide in a battle that could expose both her and her kind to the world. All right, so I like the I like the tone of it, but we have to explain more what's the what's the stakes. All right, all we know is that she's going to be revealed, but why is that bad? Is she an alien that's not supposed to be on the planet, or is her people a whole bunch of face eating people, and 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 if they're revealed, they'll eat everybody's faces? I don't know. Um, we have to make sure that um, the stakes are high. All right, so right now, all we know is that she will be revealed. And that's not necessarily something that will get somebody to move forward. So um, let's look at that when we're um, adjusting that log line. All right, one more. One more. And I'm going to go with... I'll go with Scribner. Char... I don't know how to spell that. Uh, Charlotonea Scribner. All right, a very ambitious CIA agent and mother of two gets promoted. Unbeknownst her, new title, Assassin, she must keep this a secret, but can she? Will she be able to protect her family? Okay. All right, so basically she's promoted to becoming an assassin, all right? And then she must keep this a secret, but can she? Will she be able to protect her family? So this right here, it seems like there's something in the middle that's missing, all right? So I like the idea of a CIA agent and mother of two gets promoted, right? Uh, but we can even say mother of two can cut that out. and We can say a very ambitious CIA agent and family woman, right, gets promoted and her new title is assassin, right? Why is that dangerous, though? So we got to figure that out, right? She may keep to the secret, but can she? Will she be able to protect her family? He said, after doing a job, so we should say something like this. After doing a, 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 what is considered a normal job for an assassin, she um, accidentally took out the wrong person, and now they're after her and her family. Now we have a scenario in which, you know, her family's lives are at stake, right? But right now, from the original pitch, I don't know what's hurting her family. That she has, that, that like, what's the threat to her family? Is it because she's just named assassin? We don't know that, so we need to add some other element into the center of that that pitch in order to make that good. Okay. Now uh, we are done with the critiques. Let's go over the homework, and then you'll be good to go. All right. So homework. I need you to pick one of your story concepts and invest exclusively in it, all right? No more multiple stories. I originally told you in last week, uh, in Monday's homework that you're going to have basically three different story concepts and you're going to pick one, right? Well, this time you're just going to pick one and it's going to be the one you're going to work on the entire time, all right? Uh, Improve the best log line you have, all right? Re review this video again if you need to in order to, and review chapter two again of Save the Cat if you need to in order to improve your log line, all right? Uh, and also begin thinking about what audience watches that kind or reads that kind of um, stuff, okay? So if you're reading a book, 
you know, and you your 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 book is going to be maybe uh, have a lot of action or maybe it's a thriller or maybe it's a mystery, right? These kind of things you want to know now so that you can start adding those elements, the elements that those type of fans love in your story. All right. Now, what I need you to do is in I think it's in chapter uh I think it's the next chapter after we do the log lines. They talk about what kind of stories are in these things. And we're not talking about stories like, oh, this is a horror or this is a, that's a genre, okay? That is not an actual like type of story. We're talking about stuff like the Golden Fleece, basically a group of people, right? A main character and a group of people go on a long epic quest to recover some kind of item somewhere, right? It doesn't matter what it is they're trying to recover or find. The journey is the story, all right? So you're going to see a whole bunch of different categories of stories. And you're going to say, which one is most like my story, all right? And once you figure that out, you're going to start working on your synopsis. And you're going to pick elements that are mandatory for that kind of story and putting them into your synopsis right away, all right? Your synopsis is basically be the most broad uh, uh, scenario of what your your story should be. So when you're looking at these categories and save the cat, they basically tell you what the entire story is, like what what the elements would normally be for all these um for this story, you know. And you want to make sure that those core elements, the ones that cannot be changed, are in your story. All right. So let's say uh, if it's uh, I forgot which one it is. It's something to do with horror, but basically people get stuck in, in a scenario, right? And they have no way to escape. It's like a survival thing, right? In every survival story, right? In every survival story, the, the key element to the survival story is there's no way to get out, all right? Basically, the main character or characters have to be trapped in some kind of form of fashion. They have to be inside some kind of area that they can't escape. For instance, maybe the air is toxic outside, so they have to stay inside the building, thus making the, the, the big monster right much more scarier because you can't just run away from it. You have to stay in there somehow. Or maybe uh, if you get in the water, a shark's going to eat you. Right, so you so so you have to try to stay out the water, right? But you nowhere near any land, so you're kind of screwed, right? These these are the kind of scenarios that are mandatory for a good story like that, the monster, the monster in the house story, to work. It has to be where the characters cannot leave the area. So you have to put that into your synopsis or your for your story if you're writing something like that. All right, so. Uh, Look at Save the Cat, read those chapters, make sure you put those elements into your synopsis, and get on Discord to go and talk to everybody else on Discord and learn more about what you can do from other people. Because a lot of people on Discord right now are sharing all their content. They are freaking, they are, right now they are freaking going overboard, making sure that they're um, sharing their stories with the other people out there. You know, and I love it. I love the fact that you guys are working so hard in the, what's it called? If you want the Discord lit, um, server, there it is in the comments right now. Okay? All right, now, at the end of the class, this class is officially over. Anybody want to ask any questions from me before I get off of this? I'm going to give you an additional three minutes to ask any questions you want. If not, I will close it out and we'll have another successful class. And we'll be moving forward to Friday where we will be working even harder to eventually get this story done. Remember, the first two weeks of our course is about creating the story creating the synopsis, choosing the median, getting our budget right, and being prepared to do the sprint. Once we get to week three, we're sprinting to the finish line. Every day, we're supposed to do a thousand words of writing in order to get to that 40,000 word book at the very end. 
That's week three. So week one and two is about preparation. We're preparing slowly and effectively so that we can make sure that we do the best possible job when we get to the sprint. We should have nothing to think about once we get to the sprint. Okay, so let's go with Edwin, all right? Uh, so, question, when we start the writing for a comic book, should we write in panel format or manuscript format? I always say manuscript format, all right? One thing about comic books is, I personally don't like the idea of anybody writing panels, you know? You know why? Because imagine the boldness of a producer, right? Or somebody who writes the screenplay, a producer, right? If they told the director how to basically shoot the film, they said, no, you're going to do this from this angle. No, you're going to have this kind of lighting for the scene. Think about how crazy that would sound, you know, for a producer to go and tell the director what to do with the film crew. All right. So that's how I feel about when we're making comic books. You recruit the person who does comic books for a living to draw your comics. All they need is a manuscript and let them decide what's on the pages. The only thing that could possibly benefit you for, to decide where the panels go is for budgeting purposes. Maybe you want to make sure that there's at least seven panels right, per page so you can get the most out of your budget. But if you just want the best possible telling of your story, let the director do it, aka the person doing the art, because that's the person who thinks this way. They think in an artistic way. You know, we're writing the story. We're not making all the art. Let's see what else. A synopsis should be about two to three paragraphs max. All right, two to three paragraphs. The first paragraph should basically introduce us to the main character. The second paragraph should introduce us to the world. The third paragraph would be what the main character does to the world. All right. Don't worry about storyboarding for now. That is not something that's necessary for any of these trades. All right. Uh, if we are making a comic book, do I still... Do I still have to do 40,000 words? No, you don't have to do 40,000 words if you're making a comic book. However, you probably should anyway. Just being honest with you, you probably should anyway. All right. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, how many pages should a series book be if I have material enough for, 30, for three 200 plus page novels? I don't know. It's your choice. You make them however long you want. How do we get you to see our work on Patreon? Uh, what you do is on Saturday or Sunday, you send me all your homework, right? You send me all your homework on Saturday or Sunday through patron uh, mail messages, all right? That's it. And I'll return with um, some critiques. Uh, you can sign up for Patreon here at this address. I'm putting it up right now. It's $5 a month and comes with all our digital books and stuff like that. You know? Let's see. Uh, is a manuscript format like a screenplay style? Not necessarily. You can do it whichever way you want. You can do a screenplay or you can do a manuscript. It really doesn't matter. The main thing is that it needs to be clear so that someone who's reading it and translating it into a comic book can easily understand where the stuff is going, all right? I personally like screenplays because it's extremely easy to decipher what goes where, when it happens, and the mood. What do you think about children's books? I think that children's books is more about marketing than it is about content, all right? So in other words, there's a hell of a lot of children's books out there, right? And children are not great 
they're not great readers. So it's not like they're going to be like, oh, this book was written so amazingly. They don't, it's, you know, the people who are going to reviewing it are going to be people who are adults. So all I say is with children's books, you make it professional, you make it standard, you know, competitive to all the people in the industry, and then you market the hell out of it. You got to be the person who's going to sell this thing more than any other median because it's oversaturated. It's an oversaturated uh, 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 market, right? New books come out every five seconds, right? And the only thing that's going to separate you from any of them is not the quality of the book or the content, but more your ability to say that they should be looking at your books because of how great you are. All right, so marketing, marketing, marketing when it comes to children's books. All right, children's books are extremely easy to do. All right, doesn't take much time to write a script for, for a children's book. And when you're doing pages, you're doing usually one image per page as opposed to five, six panels, seven panels on a comic book. So definitely, um, when you're looking at children's book, it's more on the business side than anything else which will decide what you're, whether you're going to succeed or not. Guts, Guts Matterson. Uh, the two or three paragraphs are your synopsis. Uh, you know what a synopsis is, right? Um, basically, uh, what I would do is I would just Google a synopsis for, for any book you like. So let's say uh, uh, Game of Thrones synopsis, right? And usually they'll do like a, sometimes it'll be like a recap or you can even look on on what's it called you can look on uh on uh wikipedia and see like what they're doing is basically they're giving you synopsis of a whole bunch of stuff so you know that's basically what it is it's, it's explaining your story in more detail right so if you're if your log line is your entire story from the perspective of the main character then your synopsis is expanding those two sentences into three paragraphs. It's really, it's literally filling in the gaps for everything that was missing in between. All right. <laughs> Lastly, specs visions. Read, save the cat. All right. The next chapter after log lines goes into the different types of audiences for the different story types, all right? So look, you're gonna see a whole section on story types. It's gonna give you like 10 different types, like uh, the golden fleece, dude with a problem, uh, institutionalized. All these are different type of stories and they have very specific audiences. So you need to read that and then you'll learn all about what kind of audience you think you're gonna get with your story. And then you start writing, all right? And definitely keep the conversation going in Discord. That way you can ask other people who do understand the information, who do understand the, co the homework, and you can work with them, okay? Because they're gonna be, they're gonna be, they've been helping people for the last two days. They're gonna continue to help people as well, all right? There's definitely a whole bunch of people who are doing great. And I most likely will give people who are exceeding the expectations like moderator abilities in Discord. So they can become, they can set up workshops and everything else themselves because they're doing so well and they're really getting on, on the ball, all right? I'll probably do an assessment maybe in two weeks to figure out who's absolutely rocking it out and who's struggling. And then we can start um, setting up teams to go and help uh, get people up to speed, all right? You don't have to buy the book. You could you could just download the book from audiobooks if it's your first audiobook and it'll be free. You know? You don't necessarily have to buy it. All right guys, I am out. Hope you enjoyed this class. Uh, I'll see you again on Friday. Great attendance as usual. Love what you guys are doing. Make sure to let your friends know to join and get on the ball so they can go and take on these courses as well. We have two pre-recorded for them so they can watch it anytime. See you later.